Welcome to a quest for metal. It's that time of the month. Yes, that's right. It's time to do the top 10 albums of November. Where is the fucking time going? Holy shit, it's almost Christmas. It's December soon. You know how mental that is? Mental, mental, chicken oriental. But yet, today we're talking about top 10, my top 10 albums from this month. I've been mainly doing black metal throughout the month of November. Nothing but black metal in November. But I kind of cheated last week. I listened to all the fucking other ones. Because do you know how many good other albums are out this week? You know, you've got fucking Soul of the Sun, Exodus, Hypocrisy, fucking Obscura. Like, what? What? <laughs> Insane month. And we're going to talk about 10 of the best. So before I get started, let me know down below what's your favourite albums from this month. What albums do you fucking hate from this month? Let me know and I'll get started with my number 10. So my number 10 is Wilderness with As Above, So Below. I've talked about this album before in my Best Black Metal Albums of the Year video. And I love Wilderness. They're an atmospheric black metal band. I'm more on the folky kind of side of thing. And Dark Waters from last year was in my end of the year list. That's how good these guys are. If you like stuff like Say All Winter Fill If, you'll enjoy this band. The harsh screams, amazing, the folky melodies, even better. This album's great, serene, and if you've never checked them out, go check it out, because it'll put a smile on the face of yours. Next up is Rhapsody of Fire, Glory for Salvation. And I didn't know what to expect with this one, because I've loved Rhapsody of Fire since the fucking beginning. I love pretty much most of their albums. I love the kind of neoclassical... Um, edge that they have and the epic soaring vocals. I know Fabio's not in it. I, I know. Um, but the singing's still fucking great. It's still Rhapsody. They still play the same. The songs are still epic and power metal, like true fantasy nerd power metal. So I love it and I love this album. Um, it's another great one in the catalogue and I hope to hear more from these guys because I adore them. This was a catchy fun album and I think a step up from the previous one which was still good, but, you know, not anything too special. But this one added the spark that was needed, and I hope they just keep going like this. Rabbit of Fire, fantastic album. It's coming here. Next up, we got some black metal for your bum. Of course we do. With Winds of Wrath. Horde and Rife with Winds of Wrath. That's a tongue twister and a half. Why did you name it like that, you fucking heathens? I adore the album art on this one, first of all. Like, what is going on? They're being eaten by some weird... Giant Mouth Dragon, what is going on? Love the art, and that's what made me check out this album, but the fucking music? Holy shit, long songs, evil songs, the atmosphere is hellish, the music itself is hellish, and this is kind of black metal I fucking love. This is the kind of shit I love. Oppressive, evil, in your face, fucking good. Sometimes you know for an album art it's gonna be gravy, and this isn't just gravy, this is the whole fucking roast dinner. And oh boy, do I fucking love roast dinners. So it's coming here. Next up, I forget it, so I'm gonna look at my list. Empires Vanquished and Dismantles by Maestress. Kind of a long title, Inquisition-esque title, um, but fuck me, it's fantastic, this fucking album. This is from Alos, don't know if I've said his name right. Um, the You know, the mastermind of Spectral Law, which is one of my favorite black metal bands. Holy crap, the album Free is just a masterpiece, and The Split is one of my favorite albums of all time. The split with Mercognitum, and they've done it, he's done it again. This album is flawless. They had another album before this one. This is actually the second album they've done, but this one's better. Holy shit. Um, this is for fans of, again, Spectral Law, Mercognitum, those kind of spacey bands, but it's more... It's strange. It's more like a traditional... Um, it's more like a kind of medieval-sounding album as opposed to the spacey stuff. Cool instruments on here, the vocals, of course, they're going to be fucking fantastic. But it is more of that kind of medieval stuff, so maybe it's more in line with Obsequie, or bands like that. It's more in line with bands like that than actually Mayor Could Need Them. So I'm giving you false information here. Anywho, the album's fantastic, the songs are long, of course, amazing, so many good passages within. He's done it again, fantastic album, making it here. Next up is Hypocrisy with Worship. Oh, damn. Never mentioned Hypocrisy before, but that's gonna change, boy, because we're gonna do some rankings for them eventually. We've still got Exodus to do soon, which we'll do after this video. Don't you worry, Sonny Jim. This album is fucking flawless. I haven't heard much of Hypocrisy. I gotta say, I haven't heard much of them. Uh, it's one of the main bands that I just need to get into. You know, so you can't listen to fucking everything, okay? You can't listen to everything. And this is one of the bands I haven't really dived into. 
From this album, though, I'm gonna fucking dive into them, because this album is fucking fire. Holy shit. From when the singles came out, and it had that weird art style, which all these bands are doing recently. Cellar Dying fucking did it ages ago. Um, Opeth did it as well with their last album. I was instantly hooked. The songs were catchy, the riffs were just headbangy. Is that a word? Headbangy? Yeah, well, headbangy. The vocals by Peter, he, fucking insane. I know he sang on Bloodbath, so I know I should fucking love it. I don't know why I haven't listened to them <laughs> more. But again, yeah, this album has blown the doors open for me for hypocrisy, so I'm gonna go give them more of a listen right after this fucking video. Amazing album. Again, with the fucking long titles. Holy shit. Darkwood's My Betrothed, Angel of Carnage, Unleashed. Stop making fucking album titles that long. So this is years and years and years in the making. Holy crap. This is a black metal band. Back when they fucking first started, like 1995, something like that. It's like a classic black metal band. Skip forward to now, they're releasing another fucking album. Holy shit, what a gap. And it's still just just as fucking good. So you got two members from Nightwish on this album and don't let that, don't let that fucking fool you. This album's fucking heavy. This album's fucking intense. And the use of keyboards in here is done so fucking majestically. Holy crap, the melodies on here, so goddamn tingly. I say Nightwish and you go, ooh, this is nothing like Nightwish. You know, this is more like Emperor than it is Nightwish. Sure, it's a bit, it's a bit melodic, but it's nothing like Nightwish. Uh, and that's, I like Nightwish a lot, but this, is, this isn't anything close. This is classic, intense, black metal, that kind of second wavy kind of sound. It's one of my favorites of the, the month and it's gonna keep rising higher. Adore this album, go listen to it. Hey, some more folky black metal Khan Bard with Devoured by the Oak. This was again, was on my previous video of favorite black metal albums of the year. What can I say that I haven't already said? Folky, black metal, it feels like you're wandering through a forest with fairies that are about to slit your throat at any moment. It's dark, it's evil, but it's beautiful at the same time. The singing is just serene, screaming, whatever you want to call it. The melodies, are, again, even more serene. It's like you're bathing in a little oasis of death. It's fantastic. And this is definitely for fans of uh, Winter Phillips, Panopticon. Any bands like that, um, Gallo Braid, you will enjoy this album. Peaceful is the word. Beautiful. Bleak and beautiful. And that's going to carry over to some other albums we're going to talk about in a minute. Just like Chemis. Chemis with Deceiver. Holy shit. Doom Metal. Doom Metal. This is sad boy time now. This is sad boy time. And Chemis is the first one on the platter. The riffs here though, holy fucking shit. Riff masters, the singing, so epic, so operatic, very much like Candlemas. So if you like Candlemas, you like Chemist. All their albums are flawless. I love all Chemist's albums, and this is another one to add to the pile. The solos in here, come on. There's a fucking solo on every fucking song, and they're all goddamn eye melting. I adore this album. The art's a bit funny, but it's fine. Um, but holy shit, Chemists Can Do No Wrong, this album's amazing, a masterpiece, a must listen, and it's only number three. What's going on? It's only fucking number three. So number two, Swallow the Sun with Moonflowers, oh my god, this is so close to being fucking number one. Holy shit it is. Another album, Tuck the Biscuit though. This album is beautiful. And you know what I said about Bleak and Beautiful? This is the bleakest album of the fucking year, the most depressing album of the year, and you're gonna be crying to his blood by the end of it. Holy shit, he pours his soul into these songs. It's so melancholic, so beautiful. Again, this is this is Death Doom. So he's kind of like Chemist, but more on the evil, darker side of things. He still sings as well, but there is growls. Um, surprisingly, there's some like heavy black metal sections in one of the songs on both albums, which shocked me. Love all the songs on this album. I think the final song, I've forgotten the name of it, but that blows me away. Every goddamn time. Melodies, amazing. His singing, Through the Roof. Moonflowers by Swallow the Sun. Go listen to it. It's 10 out of 10. So, for my number one place, what's it gonna be? This is gonna be a shocker. This is gonna be a fucking shocker. Stormkeep, Tales of Other Time. Holy shit. I picked this one because of the artwork and 
I was not disappointed when I heard the album. As soon as I picked it, I was like, holy shit, this is very fantastical black metal. This is like Rhapsody of Fire meets Immortal. <laughs> Mix them together, you got this. It's got that classic black metal sound, but it's got like this epic feel to everything. It's like you're in a grand cathedral in like Anna Londo or something, and the Dark Wraiths are coming to fucking rape you. <laughs> it's like that. It's it's mind melting. This this kind of blend of fantasy because there's there's um, inserts as well. It kind of summoning esque with the inserts. Yeah, like summoning mixed with Rhapsody of Fire. It's blows my mind. I adored this album from the moment I heard it, and it's gonna be probably in the end of the year list because it's a blast all the way throughout. Definitely give this one a listen. And that art, man. Oh, I can look at that art forever. More black metal bands need more epic arts like that. Definitely love this one. Amazing album, and it's my number one of the month. So that was my list, my favorite albums from November. Let me know down below what's your favorite albums in November. What did you like? What did you hate? What do you think of my list? Let me know, and we'll see you again on another Quest for Metal.